tired of making excuses that I was busy or something. <laughs> so I focused on my goal, accomplishing CC. Yeah. So I want to start my speech. Uh, a moment ago, I was in the toilet, and one child asked me, what is fair traveling? So I, I told him, Hang in Korea, but he still didn't get what it is. So I'm curious, is there anyone who has heard about fair traveling before? Oh, you yes, I knew. Yeah, it's a new trend of traveling these days, fair traveling. So, so you guys are familiar with this fair traveling, so I will tell you how this uh, appeared, fair traveling, and I will tell you how to become a fair traveler. So, before I start, uh, I will talk about the traveling principles. I want to show you some pictures. This is the picture of Hilton Hotel in the Maldives. Yeah, I, I hope you enjoy these pictures. Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it impeccable? <laughs> yeah. Uh, beautiful room. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, I will give you a few seconds to enjoy this view. Just uh, look at this picture and assume that you're in the middle of this picture. How do you feel? More comfortable. Yeah, comfortable. Yeah. But I first saw, when I saw these pictures five years ago, I, I found these pictures online through SciWorld five years ago. And I made in my mind that I would go on a honeymoon to Maldives, to this hotel, someday. But a month ago, I read this book, whose title is Travel Hope in Korean. It says it's a tra fair traveling guidebook. And, and, and through this book, I realized that this might be heaven on earth for tourists. But actually, Maldives, this hotel, was a hell for the local people. So I will tell you the truth. Do you know? How many, uh, what portion of Maldives live with less than one dollar every day? 30%. So then you might think, oh, then it may be cheap there, so it's possible to live with less than one dollar. But it's not. When they were fishermen and Maldives were not developed, it was possible to live with less than one dollar. But now it's a tourist spot, and after it is developed, the living cost skyrocketed. So it's almost impossible to live with, it with less than one dollar. So what happened? 30% of Maldivian kids are suffering from starvation. And there are many problems. So they cannot get fresh water because all the fresh water are taken in the, to, to the resort or hotel for the public bath and you know, swimming pool. So they have to walk long distance every day to get fresh water. And at this beautiful beach, which belong to them, they cannot swim there. Normal people cannot swim there because it might disturb tourists from other countries. Is this fair? Because this is not fair, and it's happening all over the world. So fair traveling, sorry, fair travel. So, so how can you become a fair traveler? Actually, I have so many things to tell you about fair traveling. And then I summarize some of them, the principles to be a fair traveler. I want you to take a quick look at this. And I will make another speech on other principles next day. <laughs> fair travel num version number two. <laughs> I, will, I will talk about these two principles today. First of all, share benefits with the province. Use the local hotels, restaurants, and transportation. Can you guess what this means? If you sleep in Hunter Hotel or Hyatt, who takes the money? Who takes the benefit from tourism? International big companies. And local people cannot take any profit from it. And, and if you eat McDonald's or Outback Steakhouse, who takes the profit? So, so fair traveling recommend you eat in the local restaurants. You don't have to eat local food, but you it's better to eat in local restaurant and and use the hotel like small hotels and guest house if you can. 
And second one, respect human rights. Choose hotels, travel agencies that offer their working conditions to their employees. <clears throat> uh, I will give you some example. Some hotels in the poor countries, they hire uh, maids and waiters, and they only pay only a small amount of money. If they are sick, they don't. They pay for their bills for their hospitals, and just to cut them off. And so we should, if we know that fact, many of us cannot find that out. Then we should not use that hotel, right? And like travel agencies, some if you want to go to Himalayas, then you need a porter. But the limit of porter, the limit of luggage is 20 kilograms. But some travel agents force them to carry like 40 kilograms. And if you know that. You should not use it, and you should ask first then, what's the conditions for the porters and other other guys, you, so the others, next time. So uh, I think these two principles, you might get some pictures on what fair development is. After finishing this book, I thought that if it's not fair, um, if it's not unfair, then it's fair traveling. But actually, I had a couple of chances to meet those the authors of this book, and they said, uh, if if traveling makes more people happier and makes more people smart, then it's fair travel. So the principle that is not important is try to share happiness with others when you go travel. Then I'm sure that you can gain more tra happiness from them. And this is the the end of today's speech. Thanks. Yeah.